Good day everyone. I am Shiva Khoya and it's a pleasure to be here with all of you today. As we celebrate reaching 6000 subscribers, I am thrilled to share an exciting topic that I have been working on, cloud-based ERP solutions. Today, I will provide you with a glimpse into the world of ERP cloud solutions and how they are different from on-premise solutions. Without any delay, let's dive right in. This slide tells us how ERP cloud solutions are growing from the last seven years. As you can see, from the year 2016 to 2021, they were growing at more than 20% per year. That's huge. Even though they are slowing down a little bit in the recent past, but the growth is robust. This is something we all cannot ignore. This slide shows that demand for ERP cloud is more for finance applications followed by procurement and then payroll. These are the leading companies in ERP space. Intuit, SAP, Oracle followed by Workday. Before even we jump into differences, let's quickly go through the story of how ERP solutions evolved over time. In 1990s, to access ERP applications, business users have to install a software on their computers just like how we would install chrome.exe in our Windows workstation to access Chrome browser. This is how our PeopleSoft application user interface used to look like back in 1990s on Windows-based client. Does this user interface sound familiar to you? No, it's not our app designer, actual PeopleSoft application itself. Everything changed in 2000 with internet. Business users no longer need to install any software on their computers to access ERP applications. All they need is an URL and internet. But for development, we still need to install Windows-based client, which is our app designer that we still use today. Around 2005-2006, with advent of ERP cloud applications, infrastructure behind cloud applications scale up and down based on demand. If application fails, system can automatically switch to backup instance without any downtime. Not only that, the entire development work we can perform on the front end without requiring any two-tier Windows client. What we call development in PeopleSoft world is now called configuration in cloud terminology. For this demo, I'm going to compare and show you how development process differs between an on-premise ERP application and a cloud ERP application. Keep in mind, this is just for the sake of educational purpose only. I'm not promoting one product over the other. On-premise application side, I will use our favorite application, PeopleSoft. Even though PeopleSoft applications can now be hosted on cloud and are scalable, at its heart, it's an on-premise application. On ERP cloud application side, I will use iValua, which is a cloud-based ERP solution. This is the application that was built from ground up for cloud. Let's assume we have to add a comments field on a PeopleSoft page. In our case, we have to add it on a supplier identifying information page in this particular area. You know the process. First of all, that field should exist in a record. Then you modify the record to add that new field, alter the record. We have to make some space by moving some fields around for our comments field in App Designer and save the changes to reflect on front end. Now let's quickly see how we can accomplish the same task on a cloud application. I opened a similar supplier identifying information page in a cloud application. As you can see, this is a supplier page and I am in company information page. In our case, I want to add a comments field here. Before making any change, we have to open a configuration context. Think of it as a project, app designer project in PeopleSoft. This is used to migrate our changes from one environment to another environment. So in order to open configuration context, I will click on this link 
I can choose an existing project which I created earlier. I will select that. Next, to make changes on this page, I need to open it in design mode. In order to do that, I will click on this D button. Now we can see this page is open in design mode. And in order to add a control here, I need to click on this add button, adding new controls. Now I can hover here so that I have an option to add a field here. I will click add button and I want to add a new field and I want to open it as a text area. As soon as I do that, it opened the underlying master record and it created a custom field. Any field starting with the underscore is a custom field. Now I will add comments field. I'll give it a label and save my changes. As simple as that. Now I will come out of my design mode. Now I can add comments here. Likewise, creating structure for our user interface like creating new fields or tables or even pages happens on the front end without the need of two tire application. We all know we have PeopleSoft query tool to export data out of PeopleSoft application and these are the supported formats that users can export their data. Cloud applications also have similar tool to query data. In order to access it, I will navigate to analytics, browse queries. These are all the queries that were created before. Let me open one query. I will open the query definition. Let me edit this query by clicking edit query button. This specific cloud application supports these output formats to export our data. This cloud application provides additional flexibility since it supports CSV format. Either we can separate it by semicolon, colon or comma when we export our data and we can use the same file as import for another third party application. When it comes to designing the query, it's like writing the query in a SQL developer. Using variables is supported in this specific cloud instance. As you can imagine, we can write complex query to export data out of our application. When it comes to importing data into PeopleSoft application, we use file layout, app engine and people code combination. In cloud applications, they use a tool called ETL, which stands for Extract, Transform and Load to import data into their application. In order to access ETL and navigate to integration, configure ETL. Let's pick an existing ETL. If we open this ETL, here we can see what kind of file format we can import into this application and what is the separator. Here we can configure the source column specifications and we can transform the data according to our application specifications and finally load the data into our application tables. That's what ETL does in cloud applications. In PeopleSoft, we use Uproll Workflow Engine to configure complex workflows in our PeopleSoft application. Majority part of our workflow configuration is done on the front end. Even for simple workflows, we are still dependent on App Designer to kick off our workflow engine. Cloud applications also provide similar tool to design workflows with graphical depiction shown during configuration with flowchart symbols. In PeopleSoft, we use integration broker to configure inbound and outbound integrations. Configuration includes both front-end configuration as well as people code changes through App Designer. Similar tool exists in cloud applications. It is called EAI, Enterprise Application Interface. Let's take a look. I'll navigate to integration, configure EAI. Let's pick any existing REST integration. And here we can see a set of instructions. In case of EAI, the input for the integration is coming from a query. First, we have to compose a query to pull the data that we want to export. And next, we have to invoke the web service. Either it could be a REST call or SOAP call to make that connection with third-party application. This is just to give you some idea. 
I know today's episode is at a very high level. I hope you got at least some idea about ERP cloud applications. If you liked the video, don't forget to encourage me by hitting that like button below. Thank you so much for watching.